This is our next example. It's going to be a little bit different. As you can see, the thing that makes it the difference is the form in which we are given our quadratic. Before we were given quadratics in standard form, so graphing wasn't uh, too difficult. We could find the vertex real quick, and that will help us graph from there. Uh, the thing that uh, causes this little problem here is it's not in standard form. So what we're going to do is we're going to get it in standard form. To do that, what we need to use is your old buddy completing the square. Now, because it's f of x on the left side of the equation, we're not going to manipulate both sides. We're actually going to just manipulate the right side of the equation. So this will stay as f of x, or uh, you also know that to be y. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to group our x's together. And we're going to factor out the leading coefficient. Not the greatest common factor, but the leading coefficient. So the leading coefficient of x squared here uh, is going to be negative 1. So we're going to factor out a negative 1, and that's going to leave us x squared plus 2x. I'm going to leave some room right here, because what I'm going to do when I complete the square is fill in that gap. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and take half of b. b is the linear coefficient in this problem, so it's a positive 2. So when I take half of that, I'll get a positive 1. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this number right here, this half of b, which is a positive 1, and I'm going to square it to get the missing term in my trinomial. So positive 1 times positive 1 is a positive 1. Now whatever number gets put here, since I put it inside the parentheses, I actually need to multiply it by the leading coefficient. So positive 1 times uh, negative 1 will give me a negative 1. So to counteract the fact that I have uh, subtracted 1 from my problem, I'm basically going to come and add 1. Okay, normally what we have done in the past is if we had a negative 1 on this side of our equation, we put a negative 1 on this side of our equation. Like I said, we're not going to manipulate the left side. So a positive 1, negative 1, to counteract that, I'll just add 1 over here. So that, uh, when I add those two things together, I get a positive 2. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go and we can find our vertex and graph from here. So the vertex is going to be uh, negative 1, comma 2. So we'll start with that point, negative 1, comma 2 is right here. The axis of symmetry is going to be that vertical line that passes right through the vertex. So x is equal to negative 1. So here is our axis of symmetry. And then normally when we uh, are graphing a quadratic, we'll go right 1 and then square that to figure out how much we go up 1. So right 1 will go up 1. Right 2 would be up 4. Right 3 up 9. I mean, yeah, right 4 up 16. So now what we're going to do is, uh, but whatever we do gets multiplied by our a. So normally we go right 1, we go up 1, but 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. So now when we go right 1, we'll go down 1. And as you can see, there is symmetry, and that's the effect of what A has. It causes us to reflect about the x-axis. So now instead of going, uh, instead of us moving, or going up in terms of our parabola, we're going to end up going down. Normally we go right 2, we go up 4, but one, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, this is all from the vertex. We're not moving from the uh, origin or from the last point. It's all in relationship to our vertex. Normally we go right 3, we go up 9, but now we're going to go right 3. 9 times negative 1 is negative 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we're going to put as many points as we can on our graph that will fit, and then we're going to go ahead and graph our function. Again, we are graphing a, uh, oh, I missed my dot. Excuse me. There you go. Um, normally, when we're graphing a nice little parabola, what we would do is we would say that uh, we would find our domain and range. We can also find that our vertex right now is a maximum value because our graph is opening down. Our domain, again, because there is no limitation to our domain, it's going to be all real numbers. And your range this time is going to be from a positive 2 down to a negative infinity. So again, just to review, if it's not in standard form, you can uh, use completing the square to get it in standard form, which will help us graph.